Okay, so we're live on Facebook um, in the Positive Club, and now I'm going to admit everybody as well. Okay, so you're all very welcome as you come in there. Uh, you're very welcome to today's event with Michelle Keane, and uh, we're live on Facebook, which is great. Everybody hear me okay? If you can't hear me, just raise your hand. Um, sound okay for everybody? So... What we're going to do today is we're going to have a chat with Michelle Keane about her amazing story. And then I'm going to uh, allow you guys to ask some questions. So we've about, I'll chat to Michelle for about 45 to 50 minutes. And then I'll um, read out your questions to her. So have a think of your questions as we go along. She's written an amazing book, as you can see there in the background, The Discovery of Kingdom Water. I was... Um, sitting at home one morning, as you do during this lockdown, listening to something on the radio. And I heard this amazing woman come on, so bubbly, so full of life, telling Pat Kenny all about this amazing water she discovered. And I think it's a great spiritual story. It's a great story of um, just a, an amazing woman and her persistence um, to find out what was going on in her own land. And the fact that we've discovered this um, water uh, here in Ireland and in the kingdom, as they call Kerry, I think is a brilliant, uh, brilliant story. So before we all start, I'm just going to invite you all. We're just going to do a short little meditation just to center us. And then we'll get stuck into this story and uh, hear, hear from Michelle. So I'll invite you all to just uh, put your hand on your heart center. And just close your eyes. And just take a couple of breaths into your heart. And just feel yourself settling into your body and moving from your head into your heart. So moving from thinking into feeling. So just check in with yourself how you're feeling right now. Feel your body relax and a sense of peace and a sense of light come over your body. Just feel yourself kind of surrounded by a nice white light. And feel that light now connecting to all the people here on this call. Feel that light connecting all our hearts. And as you listen to the story today, I invite you to stay in your heart center. So whatever resonates with you from the story, take that away and just let go of the rest. No need to go into thinking, just let go of thoughts, just stay in your heart center. And when you're ready, just open your eyes and you're all very welcome. Two, it should be positive nights, but today it's positive afternoons. It's like the afternoon show. That's what we're trying out today. So Michelle Keane, you're very welcome. Um, we're live in, on the, in the Positive Club, which is our members club on Facebook. And we have some lovely people here live on the call as well. So um, I just want to congratulate you on your story and welcome you. And uh, you can start us off. I just want the first question I wanted to ask you was, um, how did you come across this land in Kerry? You were telling me earlier you lived right beside it. What, yes. what was there a feeling within you that this you were meant to live on this land? How did it arise in you? What was the first moment where you knew I have to live there? Um, first of all, thank you so much, Paul, for inviting me on your Positive Life program and to everybody who's joining here today. A big hello to everybody. Um, yes, I suppose I bought an old cottage next to this site um, when I was 25. And uh, then 
uh, I got married to my husband Keith and we wanted to build a bigger house so we approached our neighbour next door and uh, he sold us the site. Um, I suppose the site was always kind of a swamp with water and uh, I remember uh, a local builder called Donald Mangan built the house for me and the ironic thing is I used to actually mind baby sis Donald when he was a child <laughs> so I remember Donal and um, my brother Morris, they were both project, my brother Morris project managed the house, the building of the house. And um, I remember when we laid the foundations for the site, uh, my brother and Donal rang me and said, Jesus, will anything stick to this? Like, because it was such, there was water everywhere. I mean, absolutely everywhere. Um, so like they had to reinforce it with like double the normal amount of steel and concrete that you would normally put into the foundation of the house. Because uh, at one stage I said, oh my God, am I going to be like Noah's Ark and this house <laughs> end up floating, <laughs> floating on the water. So I suppose there was always a connection here with water and um, there was an old well here on the site and it was being utilized up until the late 1970s. And people used to come from all over passing going to the creamery and they'd collect water at the gate. So it was always a re renowned for water here. There was, you know, there was a, there was a well here. Even my, my own father who lives up the road only a mile used to pass and collect um, uh, uh, you know, some water on the way home every morning from the creamery. So I suppose people were always drinking the water. And uh, it was fascinating uh, when, um, when, when Tawny introduced me to her two friends, uh, associates, Jack Jordan and Dennis Kern. Um, Jack, when Jack and Dennis came down, Jack uh, meditated on the property and he said, Michelle, two men died on this property. Two brothers lived in this house back in the 1800s. And uh, he felt that they had, um, they had killed each other over the power of this water, that they knew this water was um, so powerful and it was poignant that uh, Jack kind of re-channeled all the spirits and the ancestors as well around around the area and uh, so um, I suppose like to get back to your question like yeah I was obsessed with water but I never thought in a million years that um, I would have seven healing property healing healing waters in wells in this in this land seven um, healing wells it's amazing. Seven. amazing so i mean like anyone could pull, pull water out of the ground once but like people even friends of mine joke and say to me jesus hadn't you fair <laughs> guts like to go at it seven times but <laughs> i suppose it was my soul paul that um made me do this and it was the energy of myself um the energy of the land and 100% the, the energy of Our Lady behind the power of this water. Um, Michelle, I read the book over Christmas and I love the book. I highly, highly recommend it to everybody watching. It's a brilliant story and you Thank really you. wrote it well and you gave some great insights. It's like a really lovely journey where you go to India. There's so much in the book, but mm -hmm. I want to start at the very beginning uh, of the book where you visited uh, Archangel Michael's well in Ballina Skellix, because that was a big moment for you. Can you tell yeah. us what happened when, when you visited the well? I suppose that, that day and that moment changed my life forever and brought me on this journey that never in my wildest dreams would I ever have imagined. And uh, my friend Breed and her husband Dean were home on holidays from, from Australia at the time. And they were going to be heading back the following week to Australia. And I met her for dinner the night before. And at nine o'clock, uh, we were having dinner and she said, Michelle, we really want to get on, go back to Skelly Michael and do the whole tour and get on the boat and everything. But she said, they're all booked out. So I said, oh, Breed, why didn't you tell me that last week? Because I said, I'm friends with Paul Devan, who owns Skelly Michael Cruises. Um, we've worked on several interior design projects because Paul is, um, Paul is a carpenter a uh, very skilled carpenter by, by trade, but he also owns practically all the boats going out on the, the, to, on the tours to Skellig Michael. So I rang Paul at half past nine uh, that night and uh, he said, uh, 
Jesus, he said, I will, of course, he said, I, you know, even if you to sit up on a few yank slaps, he said, on the boat, he said, I'll squeeze you in. <laughs> so this was, this was totally like, the more I look back at the whole thing, right? My friend Breed was home and like, she's such a lovely, such a, such a gorgeous soul. I could not have wanted to be with anyone else, you know, on this, on this journey where it began. So like that morning, we, we left uh, Naknagashal back to, back to Port McGee. And uh, like, it's a two hour drive even from, from where I am in North Kerry back to South Kerry. And uh, the day was magical, like from the beginning. Like the sun was just unbelievable. The setting, the water, everything was just beautiful about this. So we had uh, lunch after coming off Skellig Michael in the Moorings Hotel, uh, pub, beautiful pub there in Port McGee. And uh, I said to Breed and Dean, look, you might think I'm mad, but I said, I need to go and find this well, uh, St. Michael's well in Balnish Skelligs, I said, and get some holy water for a friend. So we drove around Balnish Skelligs and like, I asked loads of people, where was the well, even like, about four people to have any clue where this well was. So I drove around the little village and I saw a lovely old lady standing in a doorway. And I said, if there's someone that'll know it, it's her. And uh, she pointed me in the direction for the well. So, I mean, I thought it was strange. Like there was a tiny signpost, but you'd really want to be looking out for it, you know, to, to find this near the church. So then we have to drive through up through a housing estate and then climb over a stone stone ditch go down one field and then the well was there like looking out on the atlantic ocean and um i suppose for for breed and myself and dean like we we were just all gobsmacked by the beauty just the sheer beauty and the energy of this place and um then i went and uh, i said some prayers at the well and uh I filled up uh, two little small bottles of water. And then like I noticed that this holy water was going out into the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, then like, because uh, Skellig Michael is part of the Dingle Diamond, um, it's, the energy is so, 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 so powerful there. Um, so I started, I sat down and uh, I meditated and prayed myself for about half an hour and then this vision of St. Patrick came to me. And uh, then I started uh, kind of time traveling back and remembering all like my ancestors that had died. I remembered all of them. And I, I was like, why, why is this kind of happening to me? Why am I even thinking of these people here while I was praying? Um, but anyway, we spent about a half an hour there and um, like we decided then that we def I said to Breed, like I definitely I'm going to be coming back here again. And uh, like Breed just thought the place was heaven on earth. So then that's like little did I know that uh, I knew the day though was very powerful. I knew the water there was powerful. I knew the energy of the place was powerful. I knew the vision I'd got of St. Patrick was very powerful. I knew like remembering my ancestors and and people that had passed on years previous um i didn't know why this was happening to me but i knew something strange was happening so i i write a diary every day my dad instilled it into me as a child just he said keep a diary every day because you'll never know when you'll need to go back on the date for a particular date so i just write in simple things into the diary and uh that's basically what happened that day, Paul. Sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, Michelle, sorry. Um, yep. Just tell me as well how um, your friend, uh, Tawny, came into the equation, because she was quite pivotal in the whole story. Tell us about very, that. Yeah, very pivotal in it. Um, Tawny decided to come down to Kerry with her son, Scott, who is my son Luke's age. And uh, uh, anyway, I showed Tawny, she came down for two days, but initially initially it was for two days and she ended up staying a week. And, she's a psychic, uh, isn't she, Michelle? She's, she's a psychic. A, she's a psychic clairvoyant. Yeah. Yes, okay. Very, okay. very powerful psychic clairvoyant. And um, 
next thing I showed her the bottle of uh, Archangel Michael's water and uh, I'll always remember my husband Keith was there in the kitchen and next thing when she opened the bottle of water she's like where did you get this water this is unbelievable and next thing a divine shiver inside my whole body um, happened I could just feel the power the power of this this water so then she said, oh, she started channeling my ancestors, particularly my grandmother, Mary Bridget, my mother's mother. And uh, then she channeled Archangel Michael and um, he said, she sa he said to her, do you realize along with my ancestors that there's very valuable healing mineral water in this ground and that it needs to get out to the world. So I remember I had a little necklace on and uh, Tony said, we use that as a pendulum. And she said, have you questions to ask? Now, at this stage, my husband, Keith, was there gobsmacked, looking gone on, going, oh, my God. This, he, he didn't know what was happening, but he knew <laughs> there was something happening. And anyway, I, um, of course, I had loads of questions to ask my ancestors and Archangel Michael. So I suppose the first question I asked was, did they want me to test the water? And they said, yes. And they said there's a little spring bubbling up out of the ground, but um, that spring is different to the to the seven springs under the ground. And they kept showing a three and a four. So um, then they started mentioning some of the minerals like that 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 we it would be nitrate free and that there'd be cures in this for people, that you know it would help and it would heal people, and that everyone needed to be drinking this water. So uh, I remember Tony and myself, we walked the property at maybe, I think it was one or two o'clock in the morning. And the night was just so peaceful, so peaceful. And uh, I couldn't sleep after that. And like, as I said, I'm an early bird in the morning. So I couldn't wait until um, my local chemist in Castle Island was opened and I was back at the door and I asked them, could they sell me? Uh, six uh, was it five or six bottles of um, sterilized bottles that had never been used before and a, a box of latex gloves so um, we decided to take a sample of the water on the, the the spring bubbling up from the land because it was easiest because you hadn't got digging or anything it was it was just there and we went back then to farm four uh, to Michael Murphy uh, and Kate Murphy of Southern Scientific Laboratories and, uh, you know, I was explaining to Michael that we needed to test this water, that we felt that there's healing properties in it. And uh, Michael, I'll always remember Michael stood up and Michael, like, is a real scientist. And he said, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Michelle, if there's healing properties in this, he said, half the country be drinking it, you know, <laughs> and we were just laughing. So, I mean, he... Um, he was he was fantastic. Then he said, "Look, I'll I'll test it, but it'll take a few weeks because they were very busy at the time." And uh, the ironic thing is that uh, Kate, Michael's wife, had asked me about six months previous um, to help her with some design work for her her um, her refurbishment of her house. And it's it's amazing the way everything just lined up. It it was amazing that. Here she was four or five months previous getting me to design the inside of her house. And next thing, here I am coming to them to test this water. Like, you know, it's it's just funny. I, I, I see these signs as blessings. I see these as signs as messages from the angels and my ancestors that, you know, I was always meant to have made a connection with Michael. And the fact that he's called Michael as well after 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 Archangel Michael, I think that's that's very poignant and significant as well. Yeah, I think there's loads of little telltale signs in there our is. own lives where we kind of, people around us, we meet certain people, like even you were telling me, Ashling, who works with me, did a little interview with you the other day as a warm up, and yes. her family are from Nakhnagosha. I mean, what are the chances of that? I mean, that? what are the chances of that? Like, Bonkers, she said to you know? me, I'm, you know, I'm related to Mike Crone, and I said, I know Mike. <laughs> Um, it's That's a small very world. Perry style, though, isn't it? Everybody knows everybody, which is great. Everybody um, knows everyone, yeah. Well, take us then to Tawny introduced you to two other key characters in the book and in the yeah. story. And Tawny had two, uh, Jack, yeah. Jack yeah, and Tawny had two, um, two very good friends, uh, yeah. Jack and Dennis, Jack Jordan, uh, a water diviner, and Dennis Kern, who's a very gifted 
uh, healer and psychic medium. Um, so like after after I get the results back from yeah, what were the sorry what were the results Michelle did we say out well, clearly what sorry, they were the results of the first first spring test we did there was 25 minerals in the water and some of these were rare earth minerals and uh, I remember Michael emailed them three three weeks later at six o'clock on a Friday evening and I could not believe like um 25 minerals in the water so Keith and myself spent the whole weekend on our laptops, our iPads, you know, checking out what the hell are rare earth elements, what are sure. all these minerals and what are they, you know, what are they used for and all this. So I remember ringing Tony and I said, listen, I said, um, I said, you'll never, you'll never believe this. I said, but I said, the results have to come back. And I said, your angels, the, and the ancestors are bang on. I said, there's, there's over 25 in this and minerals and properties in this water. Uh, so then anyway, um, she said, Michelle, your grandmother now is sending you a very strong message. They want you to open up one of the, one of the seven springs. And uh, she said, no, you have to listen now. She said, because they're telling me that it's going to be a roller coaster of a ride, that it's going to be very hard to get anyone to believe you in this and that they're going to direct and guide me on how to do this. And the reason they had given me, given me this gift was because they felt I had the business acumen, acumen to pull this out of the water and bring this out to the people of, of the world against all odds. So um, I said, okay. And uh, so then I was thinking about it and I, I did the initial casting and everything. So I, I you know, I knew it was going to cost around 20 grand because of, of what, you know, everything involved. That was like yeah. getting the water into my house, the whole thing. So yeah, you had to dig, you had to dig up how many wells? How many wells did you no, have to this was, this was the first, this was the yeah. first, this was the first well, right? Okay. This was the, like, there was, there was initially, there, this was the first of the seven, seven yes. wells, right? Yes. So um, like, then I told um, my friend Denise, who's also friends with Tani, and Denise was like so supportive. She she said, Michelle, I'm going to give you a loan for the 20 grand to, to do this. She said, because you, you have to do this. She says, if your ancestors and the angels want you to do this, she said, you'll be all your life regretting it. And she said, look, do it. So um, anyway, I, I, you know, I did. And uh, then uh, Tony's two friends, then Jack and, and Dennis, um, came down to me michelle do you mind before you go on to the two uh, lads coming down yes. just tell people as well listening in here today what kind of minerals were found in the water in the first 25 give us an example of a few that well, were kind of unusual li lithium which is like gold in the water lithium is treats depression anxiety it's it's lithium in, in the water if there was only lithium alone in the water that is huge benefits for people's health like strontium uh, for bone calcium development of, of bones, you know, there was titanium, right, which is a natural source mineral, and that, like we found, could be used in um, procedures for like hip replacements. Do you know, you, it could be used for medicinal purposes to, to help people. Um, we had manganese, we had selenium, um, what else, potassium. Geez, there were so many, mm. like ytterbium. Yeah, to have 25. Yeah. And obviously, by the time we get to the end of the story, we've mm -hmm. got a lot more minerals. But let's go on. <laughs> let's go back, if we can, to Jack and Dennis coming down and what their right. impressions were. Yeah. Well, Jack uh, is a famous diviner, isn't he? He's really Jack, well known. As a Jack diviner. is so well known. Like Jack is yeah. probably the best divine water diviner in Ireland. Wow. And not alone of that, like he's he's a gifted spiritual man. And like he he helped me a lot on my spiritual journey. Um, he was instrumental in bringing me to India to meet uh, my guru Sashi Dubey. But mm -hmm. Jack, Jack was like phenomenal. Um, sure, like everybody loves Jack. The minute you meet Jack, you just can't but feel his presence and mm -hmm. everything. So to have yeah, when Jack, they when they arrived on the land, what was the atmosphere like? What what was the first impressions? When oh, they look, both the energy there? of these two men were amazing. Like they were so kind to me. Um, Dennis, the minute he saw me, said, Michelle, I had a dream, he said, a vision, eight months previous, 
that he would be coming to someone, a lady in Kerry, about water. And he said, when I saw your face, like, I mean, I hadn't met these guys from Adam. I, I knew nothing about them, right? And, uh, you know, so I always remember I invited him into my home and I had um, I had all my notes typed up because I'm meticulous about, you know, I said, I'll have everything now, you know, typed out and give them all a copy of it. And I made them coffee and, uh, and next thing, uh, the two guys were there and they were like, right, so Dennis, Jack said, um, Michelle, I'm going to leave Dennis start with you first. And uh, next thing, Dennis, Dennis uh, started uh, like saying to me, Michelle, um, look into my eyes. He said, your eye, eyes are the gateway to your soul. Then he started telling me stuff about my past that, you know, that was totally true. And um, then he said to me, um, he's, he told me lots and lots of things about my kids and my husband and my life and how this water was going to be so huge that it had to be bottled at source. He said, I only had the, I had the power to bless this water. And that um, my energy was like, was on such high voltage, like, he couldn't get over it. And I suppose in my, in my you know, with, with me bo interiors, my profession as an interior designer, I would always have gone into houses and people would say, Jesus, your energy or, and like I take it for granted, but I suppose when I take on a project for someone's house, I'd, I'd treat it like it was my own. And I'd want everyone, everyone to have the best of everything. Cause I feel everyone in life should have, you know, should be treated equally and have, have the best of everything but anyway Dennis was like you know who like you know he was like looking around he was like Michelle everything here is perfect your house is perfect your note taking is perfect like you know how how do you actually do all of this and this like is such a gift you've been given and uh, then he, Dennis, Dennis spoke to me for hours about like loads of things and he was like he told me I'd write a book he told me there'd be a movie made out of it he told me that uh, this water was nothing going to, wasn't going to be a patch on the spiritual journey and what I would do as a spiritual person down the road. Sure, I was laughing at him, going, what? Sure, what is he talking about? You know, and I was like, I was laughing and I was saying, right, writing a book, forget it, Dennis, you know, <laughs> you know all this. And uh, next thing then, um, Dennis said, Jack, I'm finished with her, she's all yours. So I remember Jack sitting at the table and he looked at me for about three minutes and uh, Jack's very funny like and he said Michelle what what are you thinking and I said uh, Jesus Jack I'm wondering what you're what you're thinking you know you're not saying anything so Jack said look show me a picture of your father's father and your grandmother and he said I need to go into a quiet room now he said and I, he said, I need to meditate on this. He said, and I won't come out until I'm finished. So, and he said, I'm not to be disturbed. So um, he came out then about after about half an hour. And um, so he said, right, we'll start divining. So he said, you're going to have to, we're going to have to call call um, this, this stream a name. Mm -hmm. And he said, what do you call it? So I said, look, I said, my address is Talbot's Bridge. So I said, I'll call it Talbot's Stream. Okay. And Jack divined the, the spot where the first well was. Um, and uh, I'll always remember, I'm looking at it going, hmm, it's in the middle of the driveway, like it's in the middle of the tarmac. You know, I was there to Jack, can we move over another eight, 10 feet and we'll move into some part of the garden and it'll be easier to dig it up. And Jack was like, no, no, this, this is the spot. So then uh, Jack handed over the divining rods to my husband, Keith, and uh, Keith then straight away, like, you know, Keith had the gift for divining. And then he handed them to me and he said, because of your spirituality, he said, you will be even better again, he said, at doing this. So I was like, right. So anyway, I, I, I have the gift of divining as well. But um, 
then uh, I remember... Just to explain to people, because I've done it myself, you hold these rods and when they, they kind of move in by themselves... They move in, for, yes. Yeah. That's, that's a yes, is it? That's yes, a yes. That's when they yes. Move. And then yeah. that's a no. That's a right? no, yeah. And and it's quite uh, amazing, isn't it? When you feel the energy of them. Yeah. Or yeah. like you feel the energy, like yeah. the energy pulsates right from the ground up. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, the energy is like, is huge. But like, I mean, think of this, you're, you're, you're pulling energy from mother nature. You're pulling energy from the ground, like water. It's just huge. Like, and Michelle, did you and Jack find all of the all of the different springs that day? Did you actually find all seven? No, because uh, what? Well, no, because it was so powerful that day that we we divined that one, and like you almost like energy was high voltage that day between divining between Dennis being like sure, like sure. immediate like. You know, I mean, I was fairly, I was fairly tired by the end of the You're night. Zapped. You, know, yeah, you yeah. wouldn't be going to, you wouldn't be going divining the rest of the six springs that day. I yeah, can guarantee you yeah. that. So I remember um, Jack and Dennis had finished. And then um, next thing I said goodbye to them. And I said, look, lads, if you're ever passing again, come into Kerry or anything, be sure and call in to me now for a cup of coffee again. And yeah. I remember Jack and Dennis laughed and they winked at me and they said, you will be seeing us a lot faster than you think. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, aren't they lovely guys, you know, <laughs> everything. Yeah. And off they went. So then, well, Jack had given me strict instructions then. Um, he said, Michelle, you know, when this guy, you you have to talk to the guy that's drilling this 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 side this well. And he said, you have to be very forceful and say that you're not to wreck this, like, because you know, you're not to ruin destroy uh the well, right? And he said, you have one chance at this now, Michelle, you can't screw it up. You know, you have to stay focused on it. And then Jack said to me, you should hit water at 100 feet. And if you don't, you have to stop for, for a half an hour and think, or 20 minutes and think of what you're going to do. And uh, he said, and I said, well, what do I do then? He said, well, you ring me. He says, you can give me a ring. So a call. So I said, grand. I said, fine. So I remember then um, I got Morgan Linehan of Linehan's Well Dream down to the house and Morgan like is a big, tall, strong man. And here's me telling him like, you're not to mess up the well. And Morgan had the biggest, heartiest laugh and he goes, Michelle, I'll find water anywhere here. He's like this, mm. you know, because he's so experienced in- He knows his stuff, he's, yeah. He's, he, like he knows his stuff. So Morgan said, no problem. And they'd come the following week. To, to drill for the, the first of the seven springs and uh but just Nick, just can i just jump in for a moment when yes. you found the first spring with with jack that day had you any feeling that there was way loads more did you know in your heart and well, soul we had because just... we i we had because keith had gone around previously with, okay. two, with okay. two hangers right okay. and we had sorry we had got um we had got when when Tony had stayed down with us, we got a local guy, Richard, who I went to, who wasn't the same age as me, went to just a neighboring school here. He's from my parish and he can divine. And uh, he he said, Michelle, you'll have no problem getting water anywhere, right? Then um I got I got five other people, like, you know, to just to watch Keith and look, we we did videos of it and everything. So like we knew. We were very confident we knew where the wells were. Well, well, you know, we knew that there were seven here, not you knew exactly. there were seven. Okay. We knew okay. there were seven. Yeah. So then um then uh sorry, what was I saying before? Yeah, you were on to the guy who's gonna dig it then. The guy oh, yes. who came to dig Morgan, the first yeah. well. So Morgan came anyway and uh, with his big rig well well drilling drilling rig, and uh he uh you know as at 90, 95 feet, we hit a trickle of water, right? Mm -hmm. But Mark and said, Michelle, this is nowhere strong enough. Like um, he said, you know, this is not strong enough at all. So I said to Mark, well, you'll just have to stop. And he was like, Michelle, what? I, I said, you know, he said, I, and the, these guy with him were like, what is she saying? Like, you know, We'd never stop until we keep going for water, right? And I said, no, lads, you'll have to, Morgan, I said, Morgan knew. He said, no, we'll stop, take all the time. He's so patient. He said, take all the time in the world. So I remember I came into my design studio uh, and I remember ringing Jack. There was no answer from Jack. 
And next thing I rang Tawny and she said, look, it's your call. Nobody can make this decision on yourself. So then I just prayed and I said, right. And next thing I got a vision myself at that at 124 feet that we'd hit water and that we'd hit a good flow of water. So I went out and I said to Morgan, look, Morgan, I said, keep going until you hit 124 feet and you are going to hit water. And he's looking at me going, right, OK, look, look, we, you know, so at 123 feet. The water, like I have it all in video, I video, my husband Keith videotaped the whole thing and Jesus, I, it was surreal, like, wow. you know, I could not wow. believe, like, it was shooting up into the ground, out of the ground, and Morgan says, look, if you keep going, he says, we'll hit a river at 160 uh, feet, so um, we did, we kept going, like, do you know, it was, like, the power, the emotion of the whole thing, it was overpowering, yeah, yeah. you know. It's quite a, yeah, it's quite an experience to go through, I'd say, and did yeah. you get that water tested from the first one straight away? Oh God, yeah. The yeah. following that, that day, um, we were very fortunate. We have, as we call him, the local doctor, uh, water doctor, Jack Curtin, who sells uh, water pumps. So Jack came up that evening and he put uh, a submersible pump into the well. And uh, the following morning, we left the water flow into a dike that night to you know, clear out the line of it or whatever. And uh, the following morning, um, Jack, Jack uh, pumped out the first glass of Kingdom Water and I drank it and I couldn't get over how clear it was and everything. And uh, what was it like, Michelle, drinking the first glass of Kingdom Water? Seriously, what was the feeling like in your body? Well, I knew I'd never drank water like it in my life. That's one thing for sure. I suppose I... My whole, my whole energy was on such high voltage from the whole day before, pulling it out of the ground and getting it, you know, getting it to the level it was to see it. It was actually surreal, Paul, seeing the, the glass of water come out, my, you know, come out so. of a pipe on, on, my own, on our own ground. Yeah. Um, so then um, I remember, then we, like, he took it straight back to Michael then to get tests done. Like, I mean, we've tested, we've spent thousands and thousands and thousands. Yeah. That's been a big part of your expense. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, it's been huge. But um, then um, when we tested it, then we found that we had 66 minerals in the water. In that one, in the first sorry, one. Sorry, yeah. no, in the second one, sorry. The second yeah. one was 45 minerals. Yeah, we okay. found 45 minerals in it. But then, um, then what happened then? Um, we, t we tested it and oh yeah, Michael rang me then from Southern Scientific one, one, one Wednesday evening when I was coming home from work at eight o'clock and he said, Michelle, he says, if you can prove this, he says, you're onto something. He said, you will have pharmaceutical companies beating down the door. He said, if, if you can prove this. So then um, we said we'd test it again and we tested again and we tested again. And then, um, then I knew I said, I, 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 I knew I wanted to open the other six springs. Well, I, I, it was okay. already given for me. I knew in my, my soul that I needed yeah. to open the other seven springs. But then Jack, Jack was going to India and uh, he was going to visit his guru, uh, G. Sashi Dube. And yeah. he, he, Jack said, look, I'm going to bring him uh, a bottle of the water, he said. And because he said, um, he's an astrologer, he said. And uh, he said, he, you know, He'll, um, he'll, he'll meditate. And he said he, he could be a great help like in this. So this I said, is why the story for me is a bit like the Irish, he pray love, you know, now you're off yeah. to India. So well, we bring in yeah. the Indian guru and this kind yeah. of message, which is amazing. But so, before we go to India, just want to ask you, Michelle, yeah. 45 minerals, we're at 45, but wait before we get to 66, but to have a water with 45 minerals, and uh, how unique is, how unique is that on the planet? Like, Give us the next best situation with a water. It's, it's exceptional. Right, okay. It's exceptional. Is there another it's water that exists like that on the planet? Well, I like we have tested it up against 10 of the waters of the top brands of the world, right? And we are very comparable and more comparable in, in, in lots of ways, right? We have a nitrate free water, like, you know, I mean, it's pure organic water. If not, if, if, if you want to just even take that alone, 
like it's... and I, I know in the story michelle sorry you've had a chat with with the chap from oscar wildwater yes, uh, from here, uh, like yeah he was, he was and what has he said about your water in comparison to his what has he said well tipperary have a fabulous water tipperary have like 11 gold medals something for their water they have a very unique water um but i suppose they like we have different minerals in ours okay like no, their water is exceptionally good. Tipperary water is is exceptionally brilliant. Water. Wow, that's the one that we see in the shops. Tipperary. Tipperary bar the water bottled in Barisley. Yeah. Okay. And Oscar okay. Oscar Wild Water is that as well. So. Oh, I see. That's yeah. kind of the upmarket John, side. John was in. John was instrumental in bringing back the old um, uh, Tipperary bottling site into production there uh, four years ago. So How vision. many minerals would the Oscar Wild Water have roughly? Do you know? Um, I don't. Uh, they, I said they would have about twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's quite yeah. a difference, you know, in yours. Yeah. Okay. Well, like they've, they've, it's a beautiful water. There's like, I mean, their yeah. water is beautiful as well. Like, yeah. but um, I suppose then, um, like John was, John was very encouraging and very supportive. He gave us a lot of advice. Myself and Keith. He was like you know, you need to go and get this certified in another lab outside of Ireland just to make sure, you know, that you're 100% confident. So we sent it off to ALS laboratories in Prague and should they came back with the identical same results as as um, Southern Scientific. Wow, wow. Yeah. Well, let's, let's go off now. We'll go off to India for a while. So you went off to meet the girl, didn't you? You went to yeah. meet this man. I did. Um, yeah. Jack, Jack Jordan, um, as I said, came back from India and said, Michelle, this actually wants you to come over with Jack for a week and he wants to talk to you about the water. So I went to India with Jack and um, and like Sashi was so helpful about, about how we were going to progress this water. He got me the most wonderful, amazing biochemist on board uh, Dr. Pravel. Um, Dr. Pravel is like a genius of a biochemist. And yeah. like, you know, he said he like he had meetings with me, he set up meetings with me and Dr. Pravel. And, you know, I showed him the results and everything. And uh, I brought some of the water samples over with me. And uh, Dr. Pravel tested them as well over in the labs there. And, you know, the same results came back. And um, Dr. Bravel said, Michelle, you're looking at pulling off a massive deal here with this water. Like he said, in, in the next five years, he said, you won't be able to buy water because like two thirds of the world's population, there's going to be a shortage of water. And to have a water with these unique minerals in it, like he said, this, this could be used, he said, as an energy drink. You could add in like little herbs for medicinal purposes and there, it had multi-functions, this water. Sorry, I can't hear you, Paul. Sorry, Michelle, keep going, keep going, sorry. Oh, sorry, he's like, he, so he was purely looking at the chemist, the scientific side of the water, along with like the business side of it. So um, I met, met, I met, met fascinating people, businessmen, I met, the CEO of SpiceJet took, Sashi brought me to a meeting with him to discuss how I could market the water. Um, then I met um, uh, like Sanjay, Dr. Sanjay um, he was uh, instrumental in, in uh, running the Coca-Cola plants in India. And he thought he tasted the water and he said, geez, he said, I never tasted water like this. He said, this is unbelievable. And he felt that one of the big giants like Coca-Cola or someone could use could buy this water and use it in um, as in, in one of their energy drinks. Um, then uh, I suppose Sashi then sent me, said to me, he gave me kind of a strict mandate. He said, listen, he said, this is so powerful. I was telling him that I was writing a diary um, and keeping a, a record of everything. Because when when the first well had when we'd opened the first well, um, my own ancestors and my own angels started started um, channeling me and directing me on uh, with, with, with messages and what next to do with the, with the water. And um, 
he said to me, Michelle, you, this is a brilliant story. You're going to have to write a book. And I said, geez, it's not a hope in hell will I write the book. I was writing notes and page. I, but having said that, I had a folder now like of... of you, were, you, were building, you were building a story as you went along. I absolutely. was building a story, but for myself, yeah. not for... Yeah. Not, for not, not for publication. As I, as I said, yeah. Paul, I was a closet uh, spiritualist all my life. And there's yeah. from now after writing the book I, and the lovely letters I'm getting from people all over the world, there's so many, even friends of mine that I would never have put down as being closet spiritualists are now coming yeah. out and going, Jesus, I've seen something. What you like, you know, nothing is weird anymore or nothing is strange, you know. Yeah, I want to ask you, Michelle, because India mm -hmm. is a fabulous spiritual land and lots of people on the call yes, are very interested in Vedic philosophy and some of the amazing mm -hmm. teachers over there, Neem mm -hmm. Karoli Baba, who was Ram Dass's guru. Uh, mm -hmm. the man that you met can you tell us about some of the highlights in India where it really impacted you spiritually I know you went to did you go to Ramana Maharshi's place as well I is that went, where you I went, went to, I went to um, I suppose when I when I went on my spiritual journey on my own uh, through the Himalayas for for eight days I started in Delhi and I got I had a chauffeur and a minder Meninder um, that uh that Dr. Sadna Dietix um, set up for me. And we, our first port to call was Kaniki Dam, uh, the Babin Neem Karoli Temple. And we arrived there and it's it's seven hour journey from Delhi, but it took us about eight hours because I was fortunate because I was able to stop wherever I wanted to stop, take photos. Do you know, if you're on a bus tour or you're on a package tour, you can't do this. So yeah. I wanted to, take my own photos and I've oh my god I've such a an amazing collection of photographs from the Himalayas from all parts of my journey and um and plus I put I put aside a budget of money that I was going to do some charity work along the way as well like give some money to kids and parents any you know whatever bit of charity I could do I had put a budget to do that um on my journey so if I stopped in a little village like, I mean, to see, like, to see how primitive their, their community, mm. but mm. how happy they are, like, yeah. how happy they are, and they want for nothing, only the love they have, like, they're in the best place in the world, breathing the freshest of air, uh, mm. everything of their, every part of their food they're eating is their natural fare. We, we call it organic. They, it, to them, it's just their natural fare. Yeah, they're really in touch with the earth, aren't they? They're really in oh, touch. Oh, they're with so nature. in touch. Yeah. Like, look yeah. at all the Himalayan herbs that are grown there. Mm. And they're using all these for medicinal purposes and everything, Do you know? Um, and like every, what I noticed is every little community, every little village was self-sufficient and it served the amenities of the people in the locality. And I suppose it was such a culture shock to go there and yeah. see how poor, how poor people actually live sure. like, in India. And, and tell us what you felt, Michelle, when you when you arrived in Neem Karoli Baba's place. What did you feel on that land? Right. Well, I mean, first of all, I was I was it was like it was like he kept the place for me, for that visit on my own, because there was only one other person who was in meditating at the time. And this place in the peak season, there's millions of tourists coming there every year. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of Americans, particularly a lot of Americans come there. And here was I strolling in there on my own. And uh, I was able to sit in his bedroom on his floor. And I meditated in his room for, I'd say, about two hours. And, oh, my God, like something powerful came over me. I just, my whole body started trembling. I started connecting with him. I could see his his bed was in in this lovely little room. Like when I when I first entered the temple, like the temple area, um, it's so white. The white wash on the walls. Like I, I I looked at this and I said, Jesus. I said, this is the cleanest place on earth. It was so spotlessly clean. Um. So when I meditated in his room, in his bedroom where he used to sleep, um. I could see, I had visions of him, right? And mm. I connected with him. Then when I went out into the yard where his statue is in this, I mean, his statue is so real. I, I never in my life saw a statue like it. And then I'm, I remember I was, I was 
praying and next thing he appeared to me in a vision and Steve Jobs appeared to me in a vision and so did Sasha Dubey. This went on like, all I can describe is it went on like a movie for an hour. And I just was started bawling, crying. I didn't know what really, you know, I didn't know how the hell all this was connecting. And then... Um, Michelle, I, were they actually talking to you in the vision or were they just kind yes, of... Yes, well, yeah. um, Babanim Crowley was and Steve Jobs and not Sashi. Okay. But like, I, I could see them as clear as I'm seeing you now on the screen. And what were they saying to you? Were they harking back to the water? What were they saying? Well, like, he, Babanim Crowley was like, just so ecstatic that I was there. Um, Steve Jobs had come to me in a vision in my own, my own room uh, three weeks previous to when I'd gone there. And he had told me that I needed to read these, buy these books, four books. And he said, you needed to bring one of them to, to Kaniki Dam. Like I'd never heard of Ebenim Karoli. I'd never heard yeah, of, yeah. I'd never heard, I obviously I was a huge fan always of Steve Jobs, yeah. but I'd never heard of uh, Babanim Karoli. I was like, you know, who, where? Yeah. And I remember <laughs> writing down like exactly what he told me to do. And then uh, I said, and which of the four books will I bring? And he said to me, you will know which one to bring. And then he disappeared. And then I ordered the four books on Amazon. And what were the books, and, Michelle? Um, well, three of them I can't tell anyone. And one okay. thing was the thousand, thousand songs of Milan Panara, which is equivalent to the Bible or the Tibetan Bible. And then I was packed and ready to go to India. And uh, the courier landed into my office with one of the four books. And that was the book I brought. So I would have, I, I remember opening the page and like, I remember in, when I was meditating in, in, in Babanin Karoli's bedroom, uh, he said, open page, open this page. So I'd open it. Then I'd read that. He'd say, open another page. I'd read that. And then he'd say, open another page. I read that. But all the four pages that I was reading were all connected to higher awarenesses, higher consciousness, higher spirituality. You're on the divine path. And um, then uh, when I was um, when I was praying in front of the statue, uh, then a, a rati service, which is where they come and they give blessings to with with candles uh, as a ritual um, in the temple. So I was fortunate for that, and then to be there for that, and then the temple was closing, and I had to go. Okay, away. that's a brilliant but, part of the part of the story yeah. though it, to be to me to be honest like uh when i made the connection with um uh, babanim karoli like babanim karoli was uh a guruji he was um he was famous like for seeing your past present and future mm -hmm. um like all the all the hippies in america were looking for um for spirituality and they all came to India in search of it and they all found him. Yeah, um, I worked with uh, Krishna Das. Uh, we did an event here a couple of years yeah. ago and Krishna Das was oh, he very was close. Huge connection, very close to oh, him. Oh, very close to him. He very said he, close to him. He said right. he couldn't, he nearly couldn't live when 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 uh, Neem Karoli passed. He, it took him a long yeah. time to get well, back to normal. He was, he was, he was very close to him. But mm. in, um, Steve Jobs came to him then thinking that Babanim Karoli was like, St when Steve Jobs was studying calligraphy in college. Oh, he they have a connection here in the physical. Okay, as well. Yes. Okay, yes. okay, yeah. So when Steve Jobs was um, studying calligraphy in, in college, he, um, he was learning an awful lot about Babanim Karoli. And he said he was in search of something. He, he, he was in search of his own spirituality. So he went to India hoping to meet um, Babanim Karoli, but he had passed on, um, he'd passed over um, Babanim Karoli before Steve Jobs had gone. So they and never met here, okay, okay. They never met here, not, not in, in, in the physical plane, but yeah. he made a huge connection with him and he actually stayed in the temple uh, as well while he was there okay. for a few days. And he, okay. he, he made such a strong connection with him that Jobs spent the next month uh, living in um, 
uh, shed of a farmer's uh, house in India, just in search of spirituality. And mm. uh, it is said <clears throat> that it's Babanim Karoli was his apple, was, the fa was his famous fru fru favorite fruit. And I don't know how true this is, but it's claimed that he was the, um, that he gave him the vision for apple. And, wow. and uh, with a, he took a bite out of the apple, Babanim Karoli, and that was what gave Steve Jobs his vision for apple. And Steve Jobs, it was the only, um, Steve Jobs, when he was on his deathbed, he had a picture of Babanim Karoli under his pillow. Wow. Okay. And then, then when Julia Roberts was filming Eat, Love and Pray in India, she'd never heard of Babanim Karoli, but she got fascinated with Hinduism. And next thing, when she saw the picture of him, she immediately made the connection with Babanim Karoli. And then when Mark Zuckerberg was at the initial stages of Facebook, starting off from Facebook, uh, he went to Steve Jobs, who was his mentor. Mm -hmm. And Jobs said to him, like, when he wanted his vision for Apple, he went to India to, you know, to, to, to try and further his, his thoughts in it for, for a month. So Jobs advised uh, Mark Zuckerberg to go to... Baba Neem Karoli's temple, connect with Baba and find out how he would best, you know, format Facebook and make the connection. So, um, so that's what Mike, Mark Zuckerberg did. And he went and he made a huge connection with Baba Neem Karoli. Brilliant, brilliant. I knew there was an eat, pray, love connection. I yeah. had that feeling at the I had that feeling at the beginning. I know Julia out, Roberts Paul. Yeah, you're the Irish Julia Roberts. And it turns out Neem Karoli Baba is the CEO of Apple and Facebook. He's the man in the background all along. He's the man. Yeah, he's brilliant, the man. Brilliant. So just to say to people listening in, if you want to type your questions in, because I'm going to go over to you guys in a minute. Um, so it'd be lovely if you have a few questions you want to ask Michelle, anything we may have missed and that you're particularly interested in. I know, Michelle, you, you're big into the angelic realm as well. But mm -hmm. before we go there, I just want to ask you, before we go to people and ask them for their questions, um, take us back to, the, to, the, to, the, to, to Ireland again and to when you discovered the spring that had the water with the 66 minerals. What, was, what particular spring was that? Well, that was the second spring we opened up. And then um, we, what we did was I, I uh, after, after coming back from India and I had to go to Fatima, I had to go to Lourdes, I had to go up to Knock and get blessings for all these places for my journey, on my spiritual journey. I had actually opened the seven springs before I went to the Himalayas for the spiritual trip, right? And um, I, I remember Jack came down and I had been, I had, the angels had shown me visions of divining rods and they'd shown me a spot outside my kitchen window. And I remember going, oh geez, no, they can't, you know, it can't be outside my kitchen window. That's only outside the footpath. And I remember ringing Jack and I said, Jack, I'm after being shown a pair of divining rods. They've guided me to the front of my kitchen window. And Jack says to me, Michelle, they're not showing you that for no reason. So then I remember Jack and Dennis came down again and uh, Jack started divining for the second uh, spring. And next thing, Jack looked over at me and he said, what, what are you thinking? And I said, Jack, they're after showing me a pair of divining rods. I said, and they're after showing me, they're after going around and showing me exactly the spot for the, the second one. So Jack was like, what? And sure enough, Jack came over and divined it. And that was the exact spot for the second well. So wow. we, I, myself and Jack, the two of us both divined the rest of the six springs that day. And that was a very powerful day because um, like the energy that took out of Jack and myself was very, that's very- That's the very water powerful. that has the 66 minerals in Every it. Every one of them. And that's the 60. one you, you have there now. Have you got all the locals drinking this water? running yes, around like there, spring chickens there's, there's a lot of locals drinking it and there's a lot of strangers drinking it people okay. um, have connected with me now and like what i said to everyone paul is anyone can just text me come down and collect as much of the water they want to drink 
um, this water has gone different places. People have sent down containers by courier, by DPD, and I filled it up and put them back on the courier for them. I'm um, going to get a giant hose to go all the way from Dublin down to Kerry. <laughs> I'm going to put it on your tap and then put it in my mouth. And I'm just going to well, sit until I'm drunk on, on Kingdom Water. You need to water. get on Irish water and they'll do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, can I ask you, and this is the question everybody asks, when will people be able to drink this water from a bottle? When will it be available? What are the plans? When well, can we see it in our shops? Well, we're aiming for six months time. Wow. Right. And that's that's our plan. Um, I'm talking with a lot of investors now at the moment. And um, but realistically, it's going to be probably six months before we get it on um, on on shelves. Will like, I mean, people, will it, people, will it be, people yeah. don't realize like the, the, the actually the hard work that goes into it. I can know, imagine. It, I can imagine. This is a massive, this is a massive project. Like, yeah. Will it be in a glass bottle or a plastic or bottle? Glass, a glass bottle. Glass. Factors, yeah. It'd be yeah. kind of high end water. Will it be kind of high end? Well, I want to make it affordable for people. You know, I want sure. people drinking this. But I mean, I have to be, you know, at the end of the day, we are producing it in Ireland, as in we're going to be manufacturing it, you know, in Ireland. So, I mean, yeah. you know, setting up a bottling plant is is big money. And uh, what you call it, um, like, look, the right investor is is on the way. That's all I can we'll say. See, yeah, see. And have easy. you done your kind of logo and your design and all oh, that? I have, kind of yeah. Stuff? I've yeah. done the whole lot. Yeah. I'll just show you. Can we see it? Yeah. yeah. Can you see it? Oh, brilliant. Oh, there's a bottle. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. And uh, so, um, yeah, so we're, we're all going home. Like, we're all... We're on the way. We're on the way. And, and the questions are rolling. The, the questions are rolling in here. Yeah. So Orna is, Orna is saying, um, yeah, Orna commented earlier that Balanus Skellig has so much energy in the land there that she stayed there for a few days in 2018. But I would just second that and say anywhere you stay in Kerry, uh, I've always been around Dingle and down to uh, Skellig Michael. The land is just magical, you know. So this is this is, the, is. This Ireland, is the best Ireland place. Ireland is magical, Paul. Ireland is magical. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Ireland full stop is magical. Yeah, yeah. But it's brilliant to have this water, you know, found in Ireland. I I can see it going very very big in the states, you know. Yeah. Um, really can. Like it's you see it's because of its unique uh, minerals in it, Paul. Like. This this is going to hundred percent take off. But yeah. like the angels didn't give didn't gift this or our lady didn't gift this to me, and keep it under the ground. Like they want people drinking this, and uh, there's like the yeah. message the message which is from a spirituality point is huge. Sure, you know sure. that for me is the main message. So uh, you have like, you have the water and you have the you have the yeah. spirituality side of it. So it's 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 a no brainer. <laughs> yeah. There's a lady called Antoinette here, Michelle, and she wants to ask you about the role of Mary, mother of Jesus, in your amazing story. Can you talk a bit more about um, yeah. Mary in the story? That's actually a lovely, lovely question to ask because um, Our Lady 100% is behind this. I have many visions of Our Lady and like without Our Lady, without Our Mother, nothing is created. This is purely goddess divine energy coming from our lady um i'm so honored and humbled that i've been chosen to to pull this out of the ground by her and um, she has given me very strong mandate very strong messages um in what i have to do with this who's going to invest in it and uh, like she's one night she said to me there recently anybody that messes with you michelle there's no messing now with this water like that, that mm. you've been gifted. And um, the other thing with it is like, uh, she, she's, she requested that I would start um, a meditation class on a Sunday morning between seven and 8 a.m., uh, which I've done. It's a free Zoom class. If anyone wants to, to come to it, they're more than welcome. Just email me um, and I can set them up on a link. But the message was, that she wants East and West religions united. And the name of the meditation class is Awaken the Divine Goddess Within. So, um, and I've been blessed that I have had na national and international participants. And I am so privileged that I can share the sacred space that Our Lady has, has created for me with people. And men and women are coming to this meditation class. 
Brilliant. And so awake. Like, so her connection with this is uh, very, very huge. Um, our local church here in Nakhmagashal is called after her, St. Mary. And uh, uh, I got a lovely, lovely letter from the Bishop of Kerry um, congratulating me on the water and everything. So like, it's 100% Our Lady is behind this. So that was, a lovely, that was a lovely question to- Yeah, thank you, Antoinette, for that question. That really uh, was an important question to hear. Noreen Mullins is writing in from London and uh, she's saying she's, she's lovely to be with us here from London today. And she's asking, would the water assist in treatment for cancer? Well, right, I'm making no claims about anything. I'm only making claims that it's 66 minerals in the water, right? I had breast cancer myself. I drank three liters of this water every day. Um, in, through my own research, um, I have found that a lot of the minerals in this water are brilliant for treating anyone with breast cancer. So like, you know, but I'm making no claims on that, but all I can say is that it, have, it helped me personally on my journey, getting back to full health. It did, Michelle, you really felt that that played a, it played a role yeah. in you getting back to health. Well, I mean, look at it like, you know, look at the water people are drinking, people are drinking throughout the world, like it's full of chlorine, it's full of treatment, everything. This is pure, raw, unique, you know, like this needs, you know, this this just needs to be bottled. I remember I, I was fortunate to connect with the lithium experts, Dr. Vijay in America, and uh, I met him and he looked at this and he said, Michelle, just bottle it and sell it as an energy drink. He said, this is you need just to do nothing, only bottle it and sell it as an energy drink to people. You it know, is true but even, because of, yeah. But even when people will drink this, like it's not just the water they're drinking, they're getting the whole spirituality of this as well, which is phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, even when you stay in a kind of a center or a or a hotel or you know, you go on mm. retreat and they have well water. And you're drinking it for a few days you can feel the impact you can feel oh, how geez, different it yeah. is you know i mean really like can. there is no doubt about it but people like the water people are, is, is drinking is is you know certain waters are to, so bad for you like like as i said before like belly gown are selling ordinary water we have extraordinary water in what we have here in kingdom water sure sure so folks where um anybody got any more questions there feel free to type them in um as you're as you're putting them in there i just want to ask you michelle i know knock is very important in your story as well knock and it is uh, yeah in like, ireland i yeah. mean why knock, why is that so important i just feel that um knock has never really got the credit of lords of fatima now i love lords and i love fatima when i was there right but i like like i mean the whole team came to knock right and and like I mean, 20, 24 people saw the visions. Like when I went up there um, as part of my spiritual journey, like for Kingdom Water, um, I just like, I could, I really, I saw the visions of the, of the people and I saw Our Lady, it, like Knock is so powerful. Knock is so powerful. Like what Monsignor Horn did for Knock was just phenomenal. Like, and, and I feel we need, as a country, to be getting um, knock out there more because everyone hears of Lourdes and Fatima. And I think like Mother Teresa went to knock. Now, the amount of people that have sent me letters saying, I never realized Mother Teresa visited knock. Amazing. No. And it's really, I mean, to you have know her what blessing, your have her blessing yeah. go there as well. Like, you know, I mean, like, you know the power of it and pope john paul visited there like and so did pope francis when he was here last um but knock i mean knock is it's such a spiritual place and i feel that uh, you know we as irish people need to start spreading the word a bit more about knock absolutely and even the, your whole story for me represents what's here in ireland we have the ability here with herbs with oh. our natural environment with yeah. our water with our um, climate yeah for it's so good for our for our mm -hmm. health you know that we we have so you know the way years ago you used to hear about 
so many folk healers and natural healers and herbalists yeah. My, and it's my, all coming back again, you know, it's really coming my back. Father's, my father's uncle, Jim Thompson, he was a healer here in, in Nagashal, um for years. And he did everything with water from the area and herbs to heal people. And 25 years after he passing, people still were coming to the family home in Hedley's Bridge looking for his cures. Mm. And I mean... These like our nobody nobody understood our water like our ancestors did. Nobody respected water like our ancestors. They knew the power of it. And even the herbs and the dandelions to everything growing wild, like they were amazing people. I mean, mm. they, they you know, amazing people. So how like, would you describe Kingdom Water if you had to sum it up? Like I'm hearing the expression here, liquid love. That's what's coming into my mind. How would you describe it? Um, as Michael Healy Ray said to me one night, he called and he drank a glass of it. He said, Michelle, there's no substitute for drinking anything else but kingdom water. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just look, I'm biased because I love it because I'm drinking it every day. Um, look, it's an electric current running through your body when you drink this. It's like an electric current running through your body. Wow. Wow. That's a good description. Mm -hmm. And Antoinette is hitting again on the, uh, she's mentioning selenium being in the water. Now selenium yeah. is kind of a recommended vitamin and mineral um, and it protects mm -hmm. our immune system. If I remember correctly, selenium is very good for the brain. I think that's correct. That's correct. Yes, it is. Yes. But is there any more minerals you want to talk to us about that are in the water? I know you mentioned lithium. Is there anything else um, that really stood out when you got the 66? Um, well, I mean, I suppose they're so, every one of them have, has their own unique features. Like, I suppose, strontium, like there's so many people going around with brittle bones, you know, fractures, you know, everything. Even iron, there's iron in the water, right? Even iron in its own is huge. Like, and it's it's a basic it's a basic mineral, but like we have euterbium, like we have all like there's such a diverse range of minerals like from calcium sure calcium for bone development everything you know like all these like you know you could go on about minerals all day in it but like there's every one of them has has something has something to offer. And, and I think you know, I get the feeling, Michelle, there's something about the synergy of all of these, mm -hmm. how they're all in perfect balance within the they're world. They're all in perfect balance. Yeah, this, is the, yeah. this is the key thing. And yeah, I mean, yeah. when you look at the, the seven wells, I mean, they're all the same. It's 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 phenomenal. And like, mm -hmm. you know, even the titanium in it, the titanium level in the water never dropped. Never dropped. It stayed consistent in every test we did. Right. And I mean, titanium, as I said, too, can be used, can be used in um, for hip replacements. It can be used on wings of planes. Like there's so much, there's so much like that, that all these, like that it, it is very significant and poignant that, 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 that they're all the same within, in, within each of the seven wells. Like, I mean, like, as I said earlier on, you could pull this once out of the ground, but to pull it seven, so pull it seven times in a two acre site is off the Richter scale. Unbelievable. Well, there's going to be a pilgrimage, I think, down to your house now in the next while. Have you yeah. had people calling to the house saying, I want a glass of the water from yeah. all around the country? Well, I've had people like take, like, uh, the, I've no problem giving this water free to anyone, right? I've said that before. Um, but people are very conscious that it's my family home and they mm -hmm. text me. And, you know, if I'm there, I'm happy to meet them. If I'm not, it's my husband or whoever's around that will mm -hmm. give them the water. But this water just traveled a lot uh, far afield, you know, with people. And are you, uh, are you suppose, filling up kind of five gallon drums and everything? Yeah, is it well, what, the latest thing is people are going into Woody's and buying the plastic containers and coming down and filling them up. 
<laughs> no. So that's, you know, or it's, they're bringing down bottles or whatever. But I mean, e even if you only drink a glass of it, you'll have a benefit of the spirituality of it straight away. Sure. <laughs> it's, the it's, it's, it's the spirituality of it that's so beautiful. And it what is. I wanted to ask you, Michelle, as well, we'll be, we'll be finishing off soon, but mm -hmm. just to give people a real clear uh, message on where, how, what they can do now, if they want to find out more, the meditation you do. Can you tell us everything that you do so people who right. do want to contact you or keep in touch, what they can yeah. do to contact well, you? Well, I mean, the website, kingdomwater.ie. Um, uh, if you want to email me, info at kingdomwater.ie. Um, I'm getting through thousands of emails now at the moment, so bear with me. There's people texting me, there's people emailing me, but I get back to everyone. And uh, uh, like, Everything that happens on our press section that's keeping up to date, we have a press section on the on the website so that that um, keeps people up to date and everything. Um, so like the meditation class, as I said, it's so it's you know if anyone wants feels that they want to 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 connect with their own inner divine goddess, uh, it's an hour on a Sunday morning. It's for free, and it's via Zoom, and um, like we've a Kingdom Water Facebook page as well, which we've got huge following and traction on that like and I suppose the fact that I self-published the book um uh I never my wildest dreams thought Amazon or any of the big giants would take it on and should they have they have it and it's for sale on kingdomwater.ie I do uh, anyone that orders it on kingdomwater.ie I send right it you know sign a message to them a little yeah yeah I have and, one here where you, you you give little dedications inside life yeah. is all about the journey and the destination yeah yeah, yeah. And it is, yeah. and it's, yeah. and it's all part of the, it's all part of the journey. So that's, that's the book. Yeah. There's the book there, folks. You have yeah. one as well. Yeah. So I so really I, recommend the book. It's a great read and uh, you can get it on Michelle's website. Um, and plus they're supporting local businesses. Um, if they buy it off of my site there, I'm supporting uh, Walsh Print. I have employed, I think, 120 people back the road. So all the, you know, everything I'm doing, I'm trying to give as much local business as I possibly can, because yeah, I Walsh think- Walsh Print no, are the guys who print Positive Life magazine. Oh my God. Well, Walsh Print print everything <laughs> practically in Ireland, Paul. Yeah, so, really they do actually, yeah. yeah. And I mean, look at look at the top quality printing you're getting. <laughs> They're a brilliant company, brilliant company. They're a brilliant, absolutely, brilliant absolutely. company. And you um, know, Irish. Yeah, I was just, Orna is saying, yeah, stay away from Amazon, which is a good move. Yeah, buy local, uh, buy from people yeah. like, yeah, directly, I think is, is, is the way yeah. to go. Michelle, um, before we go, there is one thing I just want to ask that I, when I read the book, you were in India and you were kind of going along, I think it was a cliff edge or something, and you saw a man directing people and that man fell um, and died. And you mentioned it in the book as being a really kind of powerful moment. And just what, what did you derive from that? How did that happen? And what did you derive from it? It was quite a, right. like it was an amazing moment in the book yeah. where the, you just saw this guy and suddenly he fell and he was yeah. gone. Yeah. Um, I suppose I, I had to, we were, we were en route to Badranet the night before and there was um, an avalanche, you know, the, the road was closed and we had to pack an overnight bag and trek 20 kilometers in the Himalayas before we reached Badranet. Um, so the following day, after uh, we spent a night in Badranath the following day, visited Mana village, and then had to trek back to our, our, our car, uh, the 20 kilometers. And I remember then there was like all the tourists, everyone had to walk. So it wasn't just me, all the tourists had to park up like in these narrow roads and, and, and just trek through the Himalayas, which was one of the most memorable and liberating experiences I ever in my life experienced. But, Anyway, there were soldiers directing us because we were being guided by the river where to go because sure, none of us knew where we were going. You know, we were following the river and following the people. And um, next thing, the soldiers blew the whistle and we all had to run. And like up thousands of feet up at a sheer angle, there was this machine and it was taking away all the rubble to, to, that, had, that had fallen off, off the mountains. And then... I looked and there was this 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 Indian man, workman, and he was directing the, the digger. And next thing, um, 
the, the soldiers blew the whistle and told us to run as fast as we can because the rubble was coming down from the mountains and like it could hit anyone, you know, down when it had land. So we had to go when they had cleared so much of the rubble. But next thing I look back and next thing I saw, I saw the digger moving and it was like, it, it was suicidal actually what, what was happening, like the value in life, like to put any man directing, uh, like a digger at a sheer angle up thousands of feet on the cliff was like in my opinion it was a suicidal task to ask anyone to do and then I just looked and there was your man he fell to his death like and uh, I suppose I initially went cold um, I stood there and um, I said to myself God I thought about my own two kids at home I thought he was some you know, he was some mother's son. And I remember I had to run back to the car, all the way back to the car. And another man who saw it came over to me. I just sat there and I cried, sure, what could you do when you cry? Mm. There was nothing nobody could do. There was nothing nobody could say. But it's moments like that you realize in your life how fragile things are. And, you know, in one minute you can be there directing a digger and next thing fall thousands of feet to your death. So like, you know, I take nothing for granted anymore in life. You know, Just seize the day, Michelle. Is that seize your vibe? The day. Yeah. And, you know, and I suppose if you'd call that, that was probably one of the worst experiences I had with on this journey. But then mm. I suppose I was shown that for a reason to value That's what, what I, I was thinking. Yeah. Did you feel you know, what the reason that was the reason, was it, to seize the day yeah, to really, to, you know, and really life. appreciate and. And sure, then that night, that, that, that evening, I ended up down in the Ganges pouring kingdom water into Mother Ganges. And like, you know, it was, I'll never forget that day. Yeah, the Ganges, everybody talks about the Ganges. Oh, the did Ganges. you get in the water there? Oh, I did. I did. Yeah. I did the usual ritual, um, dipped in and dipped out. Um, for me, the Ganges was like, the Ganges was something else like. Wow. The Ganges, like to feel Kingdom Water going into the Ganges and like the visions that I had connected with all my ancestors in the Ganges. I mean, like I definitely I, I've been I had to go back again to the Ganges after that. I mean, think of it. I, 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 I was on this spiritual journey in in a year and a half. I went to India seven times. I went to Lourdes. I went to Fatima. I went to Knock. I went to Barcelona. I flew over all over the world, different parts of the world to meet people, to bring this water to where it is and to get the best of advice that I could from everyone. Like I met fascinating people on my journey. I mean, I met um, a girl called Emer Lush from Therma in, uh, in, 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 in in up near Drogheda. Uh, Emer is a very spiritual person. She's her own spiritual garden meditation and mindfulness center and uh, she's actually turns out to be Tawny's meditation teacher wow. and Emer like I mean I ended up meeting Emer in Delhi like I met like amazing people I met Michelle Moan and Dur Doug Barryman they gave me fantastic advice on um, on how to market and how to sell kingdom water sure sure you know and and Pan Olin there he's a serial entrepreneur uh, he gave me unbelievable advice and like I was very very like like this book there's three sides to the book there's the phenomenal spiritual journey it brought me on there's the business of the water side and then the amazing characters and amazing I mean amazing people on my journey and for that I'm truly blessed and well like I, I'm just proud that I could mention them all in the book and give them the recognition they deserved. And this water is bigger than me. It's bigger than anyone. Um, and, you know, it has to get out there to people for people to drink. Yeah. Well, it's a brilliant story, Michelle. Thanks for telling it so eloquently today. And it felt Thank like, so um, as I said, the Irish eat, pray, love. The great thing about this, recording it like this, is we now have it. Um, and we'll put it on our YouTube channel and people can watch it all around the world on the replay and keep hearing about the story. And so if you see yeah. the video on your social media, please share it and uh, 
thanks to everybody today for tuning in. Oh, thanks. I, I and thanks to everyone, really Paul, and thanks to yourself and your team and the Positive Life Club. Ah, yeah, um, we love the story. We really do, Michelle. We love yeah. the story. Well, and we love these kind of stories. And for the hap for them to happen here in Ireland is, is extra special. Well, it's huge. And, it's huge for Ireland, Paul. Yeah, yeah. And to get the spiritual dynamic which we got across today is is brilliant, you know. Um, yeah, and just talk to like-minded people, Paul, is always a pleasure. It really is. It really you is. You know, it's it makes yeah. it makes your job and my job easier. Absolutely. absolutely. People, like like there's so many people not awake in this world, mm -hmm. not spiritually awake. And you know, I feel kind of sorry for them. Mm. I do feel sorry for them. And uh, you know, I as I said. I was a closet spiritualist. There's so many more out there. Um, and you know, the interesting statistic with this as well, Paul, is the amount of men that have bought my book has been yeah. has actually blown my mind. Yeah. Now, either they're buying it for their girlfriends or their wives, or they're buying it for themselves or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> but like, um, you are know. Are you selling loads of books, Michelle? Are they going, are they flying? I'd say they're flying, are they? Yeah, they're flying, but should we have a few more to sell, Paul? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you have a spiritual uh, lady here with a business acumen, which is what you nice and grounded, you know, in, in yeah. both worlds, which is nice. Which is easy, easy ground me with two kids, Paul. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And your hubby there would say hello to your hubby watching. I think his name yeah. is Keith, is it? He's Keith, How are you yeah. doing, Keith? Thanks yeah. for tuning my, in. And my number your one fan. <laughs> yeah. So before we go, I'm just going to invite you all to do a very short meditation and uh, just literally two or three minutes. Um, yeah. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Just close your eyes again, put your hand on your heart and get a sense of the story you just heard. Get a sense of the images, India, uh, Ireland, the connection between the two countries, both beautiful spiritual lands, the water, just get a sense of kingdom water. And Michelle described it as electric current running through your body. Feel that electric current now from nature running through your body and lighting up your heart center. And feel that light in your heart center now lighting up the room you're sitting in. And feel it connecting to all the hearts on the call. Feel it connecting to all the people here watching on Facebook. And now feel it connecting all around the planet to India, to Ireland, to England, to Spain, to everywhere all hearts that are awake and in tune with the planet, feel them all connecting with your heart center right now and send them the energy of love and peace and kindness and empathy. And let them know you see them and you're with them. See that light all around the planet. See the earth herself covered in light. As you bring that energy now back to your body, back to your heart center, always feel connected to the planet from your heart to hers. Feel yourself grounded back in your feet. Feel your feet on the ground as you open your eyes. Feel your eyes as they open bright and white. Feel your smile bright and white. See all the faces on the call. Thank you again, everybody, um, for being here today. Um, I'm going to hang on with Michelle for a couple of minutes, so please leave whenever you're ready. Michelle, thanks again, and you want to say Thank goodbye you. to people as they go there. Um, thanks, Orville. Real pleasure, thanks, everybody. Thanks, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Anthony.